Let's face it, steel terminology is confusing. One moment, I think I understand it, and then how are grades A36 and 1018 pretty much the same thing when their names are so radically different from each other? In a comment, I was asked to make a video about different steel types, something that up until this point, I only vaguely understood. So by combining my prior knowledge with additional research, I will be attempting to answer the question of how steel grading works. Now the base metal of steel is iron, However, there are other metals and non-metals that get mixed in with the iron that make it into steel. These additives give the steel different properties depending on the type and amount. There are literally thousands of different types of steel. However, they can be broken down into four major categories. Carbon steel, stainless steel, alloy steel, and tool steel. For a blacksmith, especially early on, you will be spending most of your time in the carbon steel realm. For this reason, I will spend the predominant amount of the video talking about carbon steels. I will mention stainless though. In the blacksmithing world, stainless steel is mostly used by bladesmiths. In order to be categorized as a stainless steel, it must contain at least 10.5% chromium. The chromium that is added to stainless steels adds some good attributes to the steel. It doesn't tarnish as bad, and in some respects it's harder. However, a major downside of stainless steel is that when heated, it releases what's called hexavalent chromium gas. It is as toxic as it sounds, so you don't want to breathe this stuff. Fortunately, you can get respirators that will filter it out. They're very common, especially in the welding world, but I digress. Carbon steel is a blacksmith's bread and butter. No fancy alloys, no toxic fumes, just cold, hard steel. Okay, well, deathly hot steel, but it, it starts out cold. Carbon steel is an alloy of iron and carbon. The carbon allows the steel to get hard when cooled rapidly. The more carbon, the harder the steel can get. Having only two components makes navigating carbon steels much easier than navigating a lot of other steels. Here in the US, we have two different grading systems we use to categorize steel. I, I know, it, it's, it's confusing. These two systems are the SAE and the ASTM. In fact, this was the reason for most of my confusion when trying to figure out how steel grading worked. They both use a number code or a number letter code in order to indicate the type of steel being used. Starting with the SAE, this uses a four digit code in order to describe the makeup of the steel. The first two digits of this code indicate the type and alloy of the steel. It's my understanding that there's about 18 different combinations used to indicate steel type. However, fortunately for carbon steel, it's just one or one zero to be exact. The second two digits together indicate the carbon content. This being the changing factor between different types of carbon steel. Carbon is measured in points. A point is a 10th of a percent or 0.1%. The carbon will typically range from 18 points to 95 points. The system changes slightly when the carbon exceeds 1%. In such a case, the second digit will become a five. For projects requiring low carbon content, I will typically use the steel 1018 or 1018. Probably one of the easiest steels to obtain. It's also one of the cheapest and easiest to work with. However, when I want to make a knife, I need a higher carbon steel that will harden. Often I'll use a leaf spring from an old tractor trailer, which is typically 1085 or 1085. Which brings us to the ASTM grading system. The ASTM system uses a letter number combination in order to describe the steel, such as W for water hardening or O for oil hardening. And the number doesn't indicate anything. Literally, the number is just kind of like a serial number. It's just that particular number matches that particular steel. There's no logic behind the numbers that I know of, but that number is always going to be indicative of that particular type of steel. The A indicates air hardening, and the 36 is just an identifier. Both A36, an ASTM metal, and 1018 and SAE metal are very similar in properties. Both are low carbon steels that work really well for a variety of projects that don't require hardening. Now, so far, all the steels that I've used that are hardenable were recycled steels. 
I'm very fond of my leaf springs and coil springs. But my understanding is that the ASTM steels that blacksmiths want to use are the water hardening steels or W steels, such as W1. However, I have read about O steels such as O1 or A steels such as A1 being used in knife making. Recycled steel is often a good way of getting materials. However, you should know what you want and what you do not want. You really need to watch out for metals such as galvanized steel, any other coating for that matter. Galvanization makes steel really rust resistant, which is great, but it should never be put in a forge. Doing so will cause it to release tin gas, which is quite toxic. So if you have any doubt about whether or not something has a coating such as galvanization, just throw it away. Now I wanna make it clear that this explanation isn't comprehensive. My goal is to give you the information to find a steel that works really well for most purposes, but also to give you the understanding so you can do further research anytime you wanna branch out into something new. I also have intentionally not dived into tool steels or alloy steels. I haven't used these much, and while they do definitely have some benefits, and my understanding's pretty weak on them. If you're just starting out, buy some 1018 or A36 steel for hooks, bottle openers, decorative blacksmithing or any structural blacksmithing, such as pan racks or gates, and buy some 1080 to 1095 steel for projects that would need hardened, such as a knife. You also wanna try not to get steel that has too high of a carbon content for the job that you are doing, as it's usually more expensive, less forgiving, harder to work with, and more likely to crack or shatter if used in an incorrect application. As I had said earlier, this video was a suggestion that somebody had put in a comment. I really enjoyed doing this and learned a lot preparing for it. I would love to hear your comments too. So if you have a suggestion, please feel welcome to put it in the comments and I would be honored to consider it.